Okay, this is a problem from the textbook that will hopefully help you to understand the different ways to look at the volume revolution question and um, of all different flavors, dishwasher, shell. So we have uh, four different lines are going to revolve about, but the region in every one will be the curve y equals 3x to the fourth um, between um, 1 and negative 1, x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. And, and the x-axis. So we have this picture here, y equals 3x to the fourth, x equals 1, x equals negative 1, and the x-axis, that region there is going to be revolved first about the x-axis. So the question that you ask at the beginning is, um, is there a gap between your region and your axis? Is it flush up against there? And the answer is no. And when the answer is no, you have to choose between either disk or shells. Okay, when the problem is done with disk, you draw a typical rectangle that is perpendicular to the axis. When it's done with shells, you draw one that's parallel to the axis. And so it'll be in X if you are using disk, and you'll be in Y if you're using shells in this case. Okay. Um, I'll first show you how it sets up with disk, and then I'll show you how it sets up with shells, just to show you the difference. And in this case, one is a lot better than the other. So we draw a typical rectangle perpendicular to the axis. We're going to be in X because this rectangle is going to move from left to right. And the formula for the volume of a disk, uh, volume using disks, is pi. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, here's the animation. This is uh, 10 discrete disks that generate um, the volume, an approximation to the volume. Okay, the formula is pi times the integral from a to b of the radius squared. So we just need the radius. But in this, the in this case, when you're flush up against the axis like this, and the axis is the x-axis, then this height off of the x-axis is the radius. The distance from the x-axis is called y, but since we're in x, we're going to trade that in for the function. So just the function value basically is what the radius is, f of x. And the function is uh, 3x to the fourth. So this integral is just simply pi times the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 3x to the fourth quantity squared. Um, square the entirety of the inside. Don't just square the x to the fourth, but also square the three to get a nine, and then pull that nine outside. And we'll have um, x to the eighth to integrate. Antiderivative is x to the ninth over nine. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, because x to the eighth is an even function, what we can do is double the integral and go from zero to one so that we can use 0 as a lower limit and not negative 1. It's a little easier. We can do that only when the function on the inside is even. And so we get 18 pi, and then we get x to the ninth over 9. Put a 1 in, you get 1 ninth, and then times the 18 pi, the answer is 2 pi. Okay. I'm going to show you it's set up with shells. Just to see how, uh, just to see, you know, how it works. But um, this was pretty painless, and so this is the better route to go with this particular problem. Okay. And so for shells, you have to draw your typical rectangle parallel to the axis, and the volume is two pi times the radius and the, and the height, the integral of the radius and the height from a to b. Okay. So you have a rectangle that's parallel to the axis. You rotate around, you get a shell. It's a typical one. And here is a picture again where we need the radius and we need the height. Okay, The radius is the distance, once again, off of the x-axis. And our integral is in y. This, these rectangles get moved vertically upward, so because our integral is in y, we can ignore those 
distance that have the integral being in x. And so because the distance off the x-axis is exactly y and we're in y, we can leave it as a y. And so therefore our radius is y. The height is how long the rectangle is. It's removed away from the y-axis. We have the distance to the, the line at x equals 1 from the x-axis, from the y-axis, and then the distance up to the uh, rectangle. That's the distance to the function, actually. And so the, the, um, the first one is just 1, and the second one is that distance off of the x-axis for the function. x equals, um, in this case, some the function we have to solve is y equals 3x to the fourth. We need to know what x equals. And so you um, divide by 3 and take the fourth root. So x is y over 3, the whole thing to the fourth root. And that's your g of y. That gets subtracted from 1. That's your height. And then you put these together that the volume is 2 pi times the integral. And then notice that uh, you're, when x is 1, y is 3, so you're going from 0 to 3. Okay, no need to go ahead and execute this uh, integral, or get the, get the uh, solution. We, we already know it's 2 pi. You can check it and make sure. But um, that's the setup for if you were to do that first um, letter A with shells. Okay, because of this, uh, this function x equals y over 3 to the 1 fourth, tend to uh, not do it this way, basically, and, and the disk was a whole lot easier. Choose, generally, when you're choosing between disk and shells, you want to choose disk. There are some instances where you would like to choose shells um, with, when given the choice, but for the most part, it's going to be a disk if you, if you have no gap between your region and your axis. Okay, let's look at the second um, part to this question, if you rotate around the y-axis. So when we take this region, we rotate around the y-axis. Yes, there is a gap between the region and the axis in general. So when there is a gap, we have to decide between washer or shells. For washer, the rectangle has to be perpendicular to the axis. For shells, the typical rectangle has to be parallel to the axis. So here it is for washer, and here it is for shells. So washer is going to be in y and shell is going to be in x. Okay, and we're going to choose shells again. The same idea about in this case solving for y, uh, solving for x, and having this integral be in y uh, might cause trouble. So let's try it in x first. So we take this and we rotate it about the y-axis, and we get this. Uh, this is uh, once again I think ten different shells, yeah, 10 different, and um, it generates the volume as we go from 0 to 1. Notice that if you go from 0 to 1 and rotate around the y-axis, then that should be enough. You shouldn't have to go from minus 1 to 1. It, you just begin to actually... Uh, you can already generate that from 0 to 1. So if you go from minus 1 to 1, I think you actually you'd be getting double the uh, volume. So the volume of a shell is 2 pi, the radius times the height from A to B, and we are in X. The, um, the radius is what you get when you connect the axis to the rectangle. The height is how tall the rectangle is. The radius is the distance off of the Y axis this time and generally that's called x and since we are in x then our radius is just x. You can leave it as an x. The distance from the x-axis is what the height is and that's going to be the function value f of x. So 3x to the fourth. So the volume is going to be 2 pi. Uh, that's just an explanation about the symmetry involved here. We're just going to go from 0 to 1 to generate the volume. 
So 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1, x times the quantity 3x to the 4th. Pull the 3 out, have x to the 5th, and that's x to the 6th over 6. Uh, evaluate it at 1, you get a 6th. Evaluate at 0, you get 0. So 6 pi over 6, 4 pi is the volume when you rotate around the y axis. So on the x axis, you got 2 pi for your volume. Around the y axis, you got Okay, next up. Now we're going to move away from the x or y, where we have the um, the line x equals one. And so, is there a gap between our region and our axis? Well, if you look at the zero to one part of it, the right hand side, there is no gap between your region and your axis. But on the other side, the negative one, the zero part you will have a gap. Both parts matter this time. So it's just like a no end yes. And because of that, if uh, you think about doing the, uh, the, uh, the, f the part from 0 to 1 as a disk, but the part from negative 1 to 0 as a washer, or you can do the whole thing in shells. Remember, for a disk and washer, rectangle is perpendicular to the axis. And for shells, you're parallel to the axis. So disk and washer would be this, disk on the right, uh, left hand on the right hand side, and washer on the left hand side, and then shells would be a a vertical rectangle moved horizontally. So disk and washer will be in Y, and shell will be in X in this particular example. So we'll go with shells. Not because it's in X, but because of the way um, this particular problem is set up. Okay, so 2 pi to the radius and height. We need, uh, here's the visual of how the is generated. It's in the inner part, and then there's the outer part too. We're using shells. So, what we need is the radius and the height. Connect the radius to the x, uh, connect the axis to the rectangle. That gives you the radius. And then how tall the rectangle is. It gives you the height. And we are in X. So ignore the uh, things you do if you're in Y. We are removed away from the Y axis. And so to get the radius, we have to take the distance to the axis from the Y axis and subtract off um, the distance from the X from the Y axis. And so um, that distance it's going to be 1, and we're going to take away x. But this time, we leave it as an x, because we're in x. So 1 minus x is the radius. And once again, the height is the, uh, the function, f of x. 3x to the fourth. What are we going to integrate from? We have to go from minus 1 to 1 this time. Take 1 minus x times 3x to the fourth. Um, pull the 3 out. Distribute the x to the fourth across. We'll have x to the fifth over five minus x to the sixth over six, and a six pi on the outside. We can't do the uh, zero to one and double because the function on the inside is not even. It's not about the sy symmetry involved with the shape. It's about the even or oddness of the function that you integrate. So we put a one in, and we get a fifth minus a sixth. We put a negative one in and we get minus a fifth minus a sixth. Distributing that negative across so we don't make a mistake, we get plus a fifth and plus a sixth. So the fifths double up but the sixths cancel. So we have two fifths and then the 6 pi is on the outside, so 12 pi over 5 is the volume there. Okay, great. And lastly, we're going to rotate about the line y equals 3. So, uh, yes, there's a gap between your region and your axis. 
have to decide between washer or shells. The um, rectangle that we draw for washer will be perpendicular to the axis. The rectangle that we draw for shells will be parallel to the axis. And so the washer this time will be in X and the shell will be in Y. Not that there's anything do wrong with doing the integral in Y for this particular problem. The way it's uh, working out for us, everyone that we're doing is in X, but don't think that you should always do that. I would choose washer for this. And so what do we need for washer? We need the outside radius squared minus the inside radius squared. Then we integrate that uh, from A to B multiply by pi. Here's what the picture would look like for the washers. The, uh, the visual, the uh, animation of 10 discrete washers showing us the volume there. And so we need the outer radius which is goes from the axis through your region. We need the inner radius which goes from the axis of rotation just up to your region. To basically to the top of the rectangle. outer radius will be a constant. The outer radius is 3. Now the inner radius though we have to do a subtraction. Whenever we are removed away from the x or y axis we have to think about somehow either subtracting or adding depending on where we're at. Then we have the distance 3 and then we take away the height of the rectangle 3x to the fourth. That's how we get the value of the inner radius. So we'll just plug in 3 squared minus the. And remember, you have to square first before subtracting. Okay. And what we could do with this is uh, square the. Uh, pull a 3 out of the, of the second part, make that 3 times the quantity of 1 minus x to the fourth, and then square. Now, the reason I like to do that is because I see the 9 from the first um, the capital R squared, the outer radius squared, and there's also going to be a 9 from the, the inner radius squared part, so have those two 9's and then when you square, don't forget that when you square 1 minus x to the 4th, there'll be that middle term and then I would like to pull those 9's out and be left with 1 from the first 9 and then minus 1 times everything that's in the parentheses from the second part. So my 1's cancel out. And I'll end up with 2x to the 4th minus x to the 8th. And my integral is from minus 1 to 1. But I recognize that this is an even function. So I'll go from 0 to 1 and double. I get 2x to the 5th over 5, and x to the 9th over 9. I have to put a 1 in. And now I have an 18 pi on the outside. So I put the 1 in, I have 2 fifths minus a ninth. The first fraction gets multiplied by 9. Numerator and denominator give us 18. The section fraction gets multiplied by 5. Numerator and denominator to give us minus 5. 18 take away 5 is 13. So 13 40 fifths. But the 18 that's on the outside and the 45 can cancel. They both share a 9 in common. So the 18 that's on the outside can become a 2. And the 45 that's on the inside can become a 5. Final answer of 26 pi over 5. Okay, so hopefully this was to give you some overview of disk, washer, shell. And a problem that has you considering all three of those where we move, um, we rotate around the x-axis, the y-axis, some other vertical line, and some other horizontal line. And uh, so, that's it.